So, what are deepfakes? The term deepfake itself has been overused and generalized by the public media to describe literally anything that manipulates faces within any videos. And to be honest, I am part of this problem which is why today i'll briefly break down three main types of quote-unquote deepfakes you would normally see in medias and one of them would be a slightly newer one that has come out recently and all right let's get started first there is the classic deepfake where you slap person a's face onto person b's this is a technique that requires a lot of person a's facial data from numerous distinct angles along with a lengthy training time to generate the exact same facial expression that matches person b's pose in that specific frame. The most popular tool for making this type of deepfake is Deface Lab, where very high quality deepfakes can be achieved through this tool, like what you are seeing right now. Second, the Dame Dane meme, which uses person A's facial movements to animate a picture of person B's. To put it simply, by aligning the face landmarks of both faces, person A's expression can then be transferred onto person B's. And if the landmarks are not detected and mapped properly, or if the edges of the face are not synthesized accurately, you can produce very odd and funny image animations. This technique was first demonstrated in the research paper called the First Order Motion Model for Image Animation. Lastly, which is this video's protagonist? STIT, short for Stitch It In Time, is a GAN-based facial editing made for videos. What's different about this is that it can perform a different type of facial manipulations like those parameters edits you do in an image. To look older or younger, feminine or masculine, just in a video instead. The overall concept doesn't sound particularly hard, but the underlying problems and its complex solutions to make it look this clean is what makes STIT impressive. Remember this video? This was about a year ago, where a style clip was one of the first ones to use a face encoder called E4E, which is another research paper. This encoding process allows you to edit the attributes of any faces of your choice. But however, there was a simple downside. The encoded face struggles to look exactly like your input face. This is a problem because we are only able to perform edits on the encoded face. For those of you who don't know what encoding faces are, it is essentially when you simplify a face down to a lot of parameters, where these parameters would represent this face. So when you pass these parameters through a generator aka a decoder, it will generate a face. By manipulating these parameters, you can then adjust the attributes, for example, the age of the face, but there are finite numbers of parameters, so you cannot possibly represent every possible face in the world. This is why E4E has its downside. Now, these limited parameters can only produce a limited amount of faces. These finite choices then form something called the latent space, so a specific set of parameters representing a face you input is called a latent representation. Thus, the face is encoded into a latent representation. To put it simply, the AI doesn't understand the encoded faces. It's like a flash sheet of paper presented to them. So this encoding process is very important as it not only let the AI grasp the face and its details, but will also enable us to perform facial manipulation on the facial attributes. So a really recent research, PTI, solved this part of the problem in E4E and is implemented into part of STIT. If you're still following what I'm saying so far, respect. If you don't, here's a diagram of what the f I'm on about. So how PTI overcomes this is first obtaining the latent representation of the input face, then use a pre-trained generator to attempt to regenerate the input face back again. However, we know that it wouldn't look the same, and it won't of course. So by taking advantage of the flexibility of the generator or the decoder, PTI instead fine-tuned the GAN generator by looking at the input face and the result face repeatedly, so it recreates the exact same face with that latent representation. So later, when you adjust the parameters to change the attributes of the face, it'll still apply the same meaningful adjustments, but on a generated input face instead. The downside of this is that because of the fine tuning, the whole process will be much slower. We'll see later. This allows STIT to apply this technique to every single frame of the video, with the addition of emphasizing on the overall facial consistency and background stitching, so you can create an extremely
extremely realistic facial manipulation with Gen. I feel like if I explain more, you are gonna fall asleep. So if you want to learn more, check out their official papers. So let's take a look at the results. Compared to older research, the amount of flickering has been greatly reduced, even though you can still spot it occasionally. But the emphasis on the background stitching techniques did propose really improved the general smoothness of the video. So you can no longer see the outline of facial editing anymore. However, the major downside of Stit is the incredible long runtime. It took nearly an hour for the AI to perform edits on a 10 seconds video on a RTX 3090. This is probably caused by the fine tune mentioned above, but in general, the edits are surprisingly accurate, especially this young Emma Watson edit. It looks amazing and weird at the same time. The official demo also did limit test their AI on animations too, and it looks slightly horrific. It adds too many realistic details like the teeth that creeped me out, and this will only work on semi-realistic animations too, so if your input cannot detect the face in any of the given video frames, sadly, you cannot run it through that video clip. Well, at the end of the day, there is really nothing wrong in generalizing all these facial manipulation techniques as deepfakes. I just mainly wanted to help you optimize your Google search experience through the use of terms such as first order motion model for image animation instead of the dame dame meme deepfake how to. And you can sound cooler in your own head. Anyways, if you want to run state yourself, I'll link my installation tutorial down in the description. If you want to learn more about AI, today's sponsor Skillshare actually has it for you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can freely explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and have fun with your creativity. And after this video, you probably either fell asleep or want to know more about AI and machine learning. Then I suggest this class called Artificial Intelligence for Beginners Tools to Learn Machine Learning by Alvin Wen, which provides a very great introduction into practical machine learning or as a background lullaby. The lessons aren't that long either, so you can easily go through them during your free time. What's even better is that they are currently also providing an offer of one month free premium trial, which provides you plenty of time to go through these short lessons. And even if you're done with that class, you can also check out their other amazing ad free and high quality creative classes like photography, illustrations, and video editing. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Lastly, thank you for watching. A big shout out to Andrew, Panther Modern, and many other Patreons and members that support my work through Patreon and YouTube. If you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord too. On my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.